In this tutorial, you're going to learn two different ways to optimize images for your WordPress website. The first one is the manual way using software on your computer. The second one is the automatic way using a plugin on your WordPress site. And you can decide which one is the best for your workflow and for your business. Hi, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. And let's get started. I recently downloaded this image from a stock photo website. It's a nice looking image of some dirt and it's big. If we look at the stats over here, it's 7.3 megabytes in file size, which is enormous for images on websites. The dimensions are 8,555 by 4,354, which is also enormous for images on websites. And the resolution is 72, which is good. That's, that's a web optimization. If it was 300 or more, that would be optimized for print which we don't need on websites. So what we can do to optimize this image is we can reduce the dimensions and reduce the quality, which will make the file size way smaller than 7.3 megabytes. You might be wondering why you want to optimize images in the first place. It's all about site load speed. The smaller and more lightweight your images are, the faster your site loads. The same as if you were driving a truck around town delivering goods, the more lightweight the goods are, the less fuel your truck uses and the faster your truck can go. Same with the website and images are a big component for website weight or file size and reducing that file size by optimizing images makes your site load a whole lot faster. The two ways we optimize images are manual and automatic. The manual way uses software in a computer and the automatic way uses a plugin installed in your WordPress site. The manual one requires work, the automatic one doesn't. It's way easier. And both of those options can be free and cost money. So in this video, we're going to help you figure out which one is the best option for you. To compress this image manually, we do it on our computer. I'm using a program called Affinity Photo 2. You could do this with Photoshop, you could do it with CorelDRAW and a bunch of other photo editors. Those are all paid options. You could also do it with a photo editor called GIMP, which is free and open source. And there's probably a bunch of other free options as well. I haven't used any free ones besides GIMP. And currently I'm using Infinity Photo. So after you open the image in whatever software you're using, all these softwares have an export option, usually under the file menu. So let's open that. And we see here's a dropdown for JPEG. This will look different depending which image editor you're using, but they're all pretty similar. So we have JPEG as an option. We've got our dimensions here, the quality here, and the potential file size of the export. That's even bigger than the original, 12.05 megabytes versus 7.3 of the original. We want to get that down. When optimizing images, the first thing I usually do is change the size. For most websites I work on, I have the width set around 2000. I make sure this link here is engaged, so it looks like a chain, which means when I exit this field, it's going to auto adjust this field to keep the same aspect ratio. So when I click out, it's going to reduce this file size and watch what happens to the megabyte size down here. Clicking out, it's not working, put a tab out. There we go. Now it's 1.3 megabytes in size, which is a lot less than the seven and way less than the 12 it was just a moment ago. And for JPEGs, you can adjust the quality. You can use this scale here to adjust the quality. You can also use this drop down. I'm going to put it to high quality. And we see now it's down to 273 kilobytes which is the same as 0.273 megabytes, which is, again, even smaller. And this is a file size that would be okay with for a hero image at the top of a website. If it was something else, like a blog post image, I want it to be even smaller. You just manually reduce the quality. As you don't go below 70 for JPEG quality, that's 180 kilobytes. And then we export this. I was gonna put it in the same folder, add manual optimize to the end. It's gonna save as a JPEG file. We see it right there. And now I'm going to show you how to export it as a PNG. Usually you're working with JPEGs and PNGs when you're doing this. The big difference is PNGs allow you to have a transparent background and JPEGs do not. And usually PNGs are higher quality, nicer to look at, crisper images. And if you're getting value from this video, this is a great time to click subscribe and nail that like button to let me know that you're liking the video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. Now let's get back to it. So if you wanted to export this as a PNG, for some reason, it would be 25 megabytes compared to the seven that the original was. Don't ask me why, it's just how it is. Let's change this back to 2000. Let's see what this file size is, 2.2 megabytes. And we don't have a lot of options for changing the quality. Export it, this is two megabytes in size, so it's bigger than a JPEG. That's because it's a higher quality image. So now we have these two images. 
The 7.3 is the original. If we open the next one, the PNG, we can see it's smaller, but there isn't that much of a difference in the quality, just a smaller size. And the JPEG, I'm switching between the two right now, you can see the file name change up here, between the JPEG and the PNG. And for my eyeballs, there really is no change, but there's a huge difference in file size. So the PNG is 2.1 megabytes, and the JPEG is 186 kilobytes. So I would use the JPEG. There are times where the JPEG quality is so bad that I wouldn't use the JPEG. And sometimes the file size is even bigger than the PNGs for JPEGs. This depends on what colors you have in the image and how much data you have in the image. But in general, I do only things with transparent backgrounds with PNGs and JPEGs I do for every other type of image. And that's the manual way to optimize these images. We can now upload this optimized one to our website. Click on add new media file. I'm gonna drop the optimized JPEG into here. And we're gonna compare this to the file size we would get by optimizing the image using a plugin. Currently it's optimizing this one actually. Let's just pause that. Go back to the library and cancel item optimization. We're gonna save that for later because we can actually double optimize. You can optimize manually and then you can optimize using the plugin and then you can have both together which is a little bit more savings. If you wanna be super hardcore, that's something you might wanna do. The second way you optimize images is by using a plugin on your WordPress site. These are called image optimization plugins or image compression plugins. There's a whole slew of them. I've used a bunch of them. In this video, we're gonna use Short Pixel, which is one of my favorites, and I'm gonna show you how to use it right now. For this, we're gonna use Short Pixel. There's a couple different options. I have the paid version and the free version of Short Pixel and I've also used EWWW Image Optimizer. I've got the free and paid version there as well. I've also used Optimal, um, WP Smush, and a whole bunch of others. But I usually stick to Short Pixel and EWWW, depending on how my credits are working out that month. With the free version, you get 100 image compression, image optimization credits per month. This is not the same as uploading 100 images. What happens is when you upload an image to WordPress, it actually creates a whole bunch of different versions for different parts of your theme. If we go into the file manager for this website, this is through SiteGround, doesn't matter which host you're using, it'll be the same thing. If you go to WP Content, and then Uploads, and then usually the year and then the month for the image you're uploading, and this is one we just uploaded just now, and we can see, here's the original, and here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more versions of that image. So when you upload this to your site with this specific theme, it creates eight versions. So you have the original plus eight different versions of the image. All of those will be compressed by short pixel. So uploading that one image counts as eight credits for the month. So this isn't 100 image uploads for most websites. It's much less. In my case, it's uh, 100 divided by eight. That's how many images I could upload in a month on the free plan. But for a lot of website owners, that's still plenty. And to sign up, click through the link in the description down below. It's gonna give you an extra bonus if you decide to upgrade in the future. It is an affiliate link, so I will get a credit for it referring you as a paid customer, but it does not make it more expensive for you, but it gives you an awesome bonus. I'll show you what that link looks like. If we go to that link page that so you click on down below, in an incognito window, because I'm signed in on the other browser, so it doesn't show these bonuses. If we go to the monthly plans, we see the free one here. There's no bonus for the free. For the $3.99, actually every plan, you get 50% more. So whatever the plan value is, in this case, 7,000 credits, half of that you get as a bonus if you go through the link down below. You do not get this bonus otherwise, maybe on Black Friday. Normally throughout the year, you don't get a bonus like this. And obviously the higher tier you go, the more bonuses you get. So if you do end up even just going for the free plan, make sure you go through the link down below because then you'll be getting this credit in the future if you decide to upgrade. And if you never upgrade, that's totally cool too. And so heading back into our website, let's now compress an image with Shore Pixel. Let's add a new file. We're going to add the unoptimized version, so the full size, 7.3 megabytes. We're gonna let Shore Pixel optimize it. Then we're gonna see which one's better. The manual one, which takes your time and effort, or the automatic one, which is free up to a certain amount, paid if you go above that amount, but it's way less work for you. So this is the one right here that we just uploaded. This item is waiting to be processed. 
Let's push this play button up here. I pause short pixel. You can pause it. There's a lot of options for short pixel as well, actually. There's a video on the carp above and a description down below. So we're optimizing the image. I'll just pause this video. I'll come back when it's done. There we go. It's all done. Well, let's refresh this page so I can show you how long it took. So this was uploaded two minutes ago. So it took about two minutes to do the compression. It compressed nine thumbnails and it created 11 WebP images. We see the reduction is 65.8% in the file size. If we click on the image to open it, we can see right here it's 103 kilobytes. This is the dimensions here. That's a bit bigger than the one we optimized on our computer. Let's see the JPEG. We optimized it down to 2000 pixels and the file size was 186 kilobytes. So this image that short pixel optimizes is even bigger with less file size. And if we click on this hamburger icon, this is the same one that you saw in the image list in the media library. Click on compare. You get this fancy slider so we can compare the original on the left with the short pixel compression on the right. And you can see some very minor differences. But for my eyeballs, they're pretty much the same. And the file size is way smaller. And so the benefit of using something like ShortPixel is it's way easier than doing it manually. But if you go over your limit, you have to pay for it. If we go back to our library, if these options on the right don't appear for you, make sure you are on the list layout by clicking this little icon here. The grid layout will not have the ShortPixel buttons. You'll be able to get them by clicking into an image. You can see the hamburger icon there. But if you want to see them all and access them easily, go to the list view and you will see them here. And you also might be wondering if I install short pixel today, what about the images that exist on my website already? You can optimize all of those. You can go to bulk short pixel and you can optimize all the images on your site. There is even a special pricing tier. Let's go back to our incognito window so you can see the full benefit of going through the link in the description down below. If you get a, a bulk package or a credits package, this gives you this number of credits to use instantly whenever you want. So on the monthly plans, you get these credits per month and they don't roll over and they renew every month. If you get the credits package, you can just get 10,000 credits plus a 5,000 credit bonus that you can use anytime you want. And these credits don't expire and they just live within the same short pixel account. If I go into my account here, I'll just show you right over here, I've got this many credits per month, and this many one-time credits. And so if you want to do it the manual way, do it the manual way. If you want to make your life easier, click on the link in the description down below. It'll take you here. Go with the free plan until you outgrow it, and then you can scale up to other plans as you need to. For a lot of people, the free plan will be enough for a long time. Next up, check out this video right here. It's all about short pixel settings and making sure they're optimized for your website. If you want to use ShortPixel, make sure you check out that video. And after that, check out this one down here. It's all about ShortPixel's adaptive images, which are also compressed, but it also helps you load images on the fly depending on your visitor's viewport. This is more of advanced image compression, but it's still important to know. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.